Meta Madness! We're heading towards Hanamura, everybody! It is another best of five in Group A. So, once again, a quick reminder, Meta Madness is a tournament concept that is designed to push the teams a little bit, to push the hero pools, to see what kind of strategies they come up with, and to make sure that we're not always seeing the same heroes over and over again in every single game. The way that we do that is very simple. We have two rules. Rule number one, 10 heroes are banned for the group stage. 10 are completely banned for the group stage. We will likely see more heroes banned for the main event, for the playoffs. But in the group stage, 10 heroes cannot be picked at all. In addition to that, every single hero that gets played within a series cannot be played again. So after the first map, the 10 heroes that have been played on map number one cannot be picked again. After the second map, it's 20 heroes that cannot be played again. Plus, of course, the 10 that are completely banned and so on and so forth. That has already given us some absolutely amazing gems in uh, the uh, tournament matches that we had thus far, and it was glorious. And now we're going for the Crusade against WTN Orange. And yeah, WTN, uh, slight misspelling there, but yeah, WTN, welcome to Nando's. We actually optimized that a little bit. Yesterday we were already thinking about what exactly that means. And there is an explanation for what WTN stands for, but I decided that it's pretty boring. And so we changed it and now it means welcome to Nando's. And yeah, it's always there's always enough time for a cheeky Nando's. But these guys are actually pretty awesome because they jumped in at last minute. And I cannot be... I, honestly, I'm super thankful for that. We would have to ha have had to forfeit a couple of matches, but thanks to them, we are currently playing with the entire lineup here, and they've been really putting on a great show as well, so awesome. We have 16 team in teams in total. Everybody could sign up. There's obviously going to be a skill discrepancy between a lot of the teams in the tournament, and as we're headed towards the playoffs, two teams out of each group will advance towards the round of eight. Now, we got Sylvanas as our first pick over here. Lucio gets banned, and so does Samuro. <laughs> WTN definitely has a Samuro one trick on their lineup because, as you can see, Samuro just gets banned over and over again against them. That was already the case in the first series that they played, and it's no exception over here. So we get a Nuburak, we got Rega, and game number one is still a little bit more normal, I would assume, but Hanamura is going to shake things up there just slightly. Of course, as the tournament continues, we're also going to get a few more Haunted Mines and Black Hearts base. But we had so many crazy strategies yesterday, especially the Viking quad support against a Chogal game was absolutely glorious. I believe it was unleashed against the clowns where that was played and it was fantastic. So if you haven't caught that yet, I would highly recommend that you go back and uh, watch the video because <laughs> it was fantastic. It was Imagine Cursed Hollow, the third in the series. Now we get a Stukov and we got a Muradin uh, for Nagrom. Our Frenchies over here, or as they were called by one of the players on the blue team, the French Mafia. <laughs> I can totally see that. It's the, the Cigarette Mafia. I assume that Nagrom is still smoking when I met him in uh, Miami both times. I mean, the, the man is a chain smoker. It's kind of crazy. It reminded me a little bit of the Greeks that played for Mouse Sports back in the Warcraft 3 days, back in the heydays. We had uh, Panic and Vazano, and those guys which was like smoking one cigarette after another. It was actually kind of funny because they were smoking while playing. So they literally had an ashtray in front of them and were smoking while they were playing. And then every now and then, you know, they would just take another puff. And it was the craziest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I've known a lot of gamers that are smokers, uh, but usually they were restricted it to uh, like outside of the game you know just like in between they would take a break but those guys no fucks given they just stood there and the entire time so we get Kel'Thas in uh, game number one right away we uh, get the fire mage in the house we have a Mayev together with that too so already a lot of CC me likey and Kel'Thas we've seen some funny Kel'Thas games ah time for the panda Chen and Orphea the panda colada that's a missed opportunity and a half. I really hope they're going to swap those heroes around. Panda Colada doesn't play Chen. Are you fucking with me? I mean, come on, boys. Like, seriously. That's just not okay. That's like that's like the fish team playing Murky and not putting him on it. It's the same problem. It's like there's too many lost opportunities. Last pick. Patch Nox. And we get Alexa. All right. Well, with that, we're headed for game number one, everybody. Hanamura, we have a best of five series on our hands. We're continuing with Group A here at Meta Madness. It is WTN Orange against La Crossade. 
Game number one, the orange boys against the La Crossade. We got Lion Lad on Anubarak on the blue team side, Ramata on Maiev, Master Thief on Rega, Pajnox on Rexa, and Bizarcade on Kelthas. My boy Vili is playing Sylvanas in game number one. We have Guilty Spark on Stukov, Play on Chen, the Panda Colada with Ophia, and Nagrom is playing Muradin. All right, we are set up for game number one, <laughs> and it's gonna be good. Also, while we are starting things up here, another quick reminder that this entire event has actually no sponsor, so it is fully financed, organized and everything by myself and with the help of the people that support me on Patreon. So if you're interested to join the rank of supporters, then check out patreon.com slash Kaldor. Big, big shout out to everybody that helps out over there. Without you guys, again, this would not be possible. We wouldn't have had Meta Mapness, the last tournament. This tournament would not happen either. And a lot of the other things that have happened in the last year with Heroes of the Storm that were organized by me would have fallen short. So thanks a lot. Very much appreciated. And yeah, enjoy the show. A little bit of a trap over here. It kind of backfired a bit against La Crossade. But, well, here we are. So, now with that said and done on level 1, the Storm Stout Secret Recipe is already there. With that, we got top side, Rega up, uh, not Rega, Rexa, Rexa up against Chen. It's Panda time, and honestly, I want to see the top cake plays again. My boy only goes for the top shelf, usually. Haven't really gone for the skin check. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's not Warmaster Chen, and that is not the black and white ensemble that we normally want here. So, yeah, he's falling short a little bit. I should probably point out that La Crusade has done very well so far in the tournament, so they won the match that they played up to this point. So, they are definitely one of the contenders to get out of the group. WTN Orange has done fairly well in their own games and it's going to be interesting to see if they can maybe take the franchise out. They lost their match, but they were pretty impressive. And every single time I see the WTN right now, I gotta say, my personal interpretation of what that means, the welcome to Nando's, is just damn too good. Time for a cheeky Nando's, time for a cheeky battle. Nagrom goes down, first blood, I told you. Look at that, they're going for the second kill, and I don't think the play E is gonna make it. So Chen goes down too. The Frenchies, a bit over eager here, trying to attack and dive, and then they get punished. So that means that the blue team has now officially taken a small lead in game number one. I like it. The rotation is coming in. And you could should really not underestimate the boys in blue. They're actually playing in Division 4 of Heroes Lounge, which I find pretty impressive, honestly. The way that they've been playing thus far was pretty impressive, and I would have packed them one or two divisions higher than Division 4. So it's a little bit surprising to me that they're so far down. I don't know how exactly they're currently faring in Division 4, but I would assume that they are at the upper part of the ranking. That being said, they're still up against some people that have a lot of competitive experience, so they are clearly underdogs not only in this group but also in this particular series. The first two kills disregarded for just a second, but now they're losing in Uburak and there's of course some pushing going on as La Crusade is trying to capitalize on that advantage. They're already working on the objective a little bit and have carried up inexperience as well, so that's what they are currently doing for two. Now, it's another battle over the payload, on the other hand. Pushing that back a little bit. Ooh, our boy Kelthas needs to be careful. Ten stacks so far, so he doesn't have the shield yet. Nagrom also low. Rega makes his way out. Chen all alone at the top lane, so it was a full five man down here at the bottom. Which means that the Panda is getting value for the red team. And not only can he push the minion wave in, that is going to severely damage one of the turrets, but also he can now stop the payload a little bit further. Yeah, Rexa needs to be careful too. I mean, uh, our man together with Misha is doing what he can. Down at the bottom of the map, or the bottom part, we have now the French team trying to push the payload further. With quite a lot of heroes contributing to all of this. And it seems like they might just be able to pull that one off. The fight is breaking out once again, and immediately the front line was focused. But nice dodge there too. Kalthas, careful with the positioning. But they have to enter the payload if they want to stop it. Misha is currently having the most responsibility here. But it's, it's only four heroes for the red team. 
And that might just be the downfall. Guilty Spark goes down, explodes as we have Kel'thas dropping the damage. The Panda alone at the top lane is now getting additional experience for La Crusade. But the blue team is actually doing pretty well. They take another camp. They're able to push the payload back a little bit. They have three kills to one. Gotta admit, this is not looking too shabby. They're currently doing a great job here. Now, the Sentinels are back up on the map, and that, of course, immediately triggers both of them, making a play for them. This is probably the most important camp that you have on Hanamura. That's exactly what they're going for. Also, I didn't even see this before. Damn. That man has a pair of nice ones on him. Look at that. The animal husbandry? Really? Not shabby. Okay. Yeah, he's really going for it. Animal Husbandry on level 4 hasn't died yet. We're currently 5 minutes in. Okay. Kalami intrigued. Haven't seen that one in a hot minute. But he's definitely risking something here. So does my F, so does Rhaegar. Maybe a bit too much. The two of them are caught and killed. And Lion Lad is also dropped. And all of a sudden, with only two heroes surviving, it looks really good for La Crusade as they are trying to get the first objective in this game. Nine kills to four, both teams on level nine. And, of course, at the top, still our 1v1 right here. Yeah. Chen against uh, Rexa. And Rexa and Misha, at this point, really getting some decent, some decent hit points through the Animal Husbandry. The question is, of course, always if he can keep hold of those, or if he's eventually going to die here. Shots are being fired. Bottom fort is nearly taken out. Not quite yet, but obviously there should be a push fairly soon. Level 10 abilities are starting to kick in on both sides. We get the triple pandas over here. We also got Ophia with the crushing jaws. And the bigger question at this point is just simply what are we going to get from the blue team? What are they coming in for? Because right now we have first and foremost ancestral healing and we get the phoenix. Alright, phoenix is in the house. Big attack at the bottom. No! Animal husbandry over. Rexa and Misha officially are getting a divorce. Yeah, they this is this is not this is not good. Yeah, there was always a little bit I mean honestly, the marriage was not a happy one for a long time and they are getting clearly divorced right now, so yeah, it's unfortunate. Animal husbandry is over. Either way. With that, now we have still nearly a level lead for uh, the red team. So they're actually doing extremely well at this point in time. They've really struggled in the early game, but once the level 10 ability is kicked in, obviously with them having Nagrom in their hands, I mean, you know so many of their names, right? Guilty Spark has played in tons of tournaments. Nagrom, Panda, Colada, the exact same thing. So when it comes to experience in the competitive environment, La Crusade definitely has the upper hand here. The blue team still doing a pretty respectable job. Kind of unfortunate that Rexar fell. It would have been cool to see him in the late game with a much improved hero pool. Uh, sorry, hit point pool. But they also lost the bottom fort, so the first structure is already gone. Muradin always very aggressively positioned. Nakrom is far out there, acting a little bit as a scout and uh, really just double checking what's happening. And in this case, they're trying to invade the Sentinel camp, or at least slow them down a little bit. There's an immediate reaction from the blue team as they're collapsing onto the camp with nearly their entire force. But that also opens up the top lane a bit further. And now we have Sylvanas starting to not only break through that gate, but also take the hit points on uh, the fort itself down. So, yep, there's that. Quick dive from Anubarak. Back out. And at the bottom of the map, still the play with the panda. I... I kind of have to admit I'm a little bit uh, disappointed they didn't go for the top cake play, so we're not caking it out over here. Pudgenox uh, is caught, and yeah, he's not making it easy now. Now, Misha is doing her best, and they're actually still attacking Sylvanas, but the problem is that Stukov is helping out too. <laughs> he gets out! Oh, he turns it! He wants Sylvanas, he wants to trade! <laughs> but it's not happening. Now he's doing a great job making this difficult for the opponent's team, but it's not quite working out. It would have been so rewarding if he had at least got one kill there, but he definitely put up a nice fight and they had to go on him with three versus one. So yeah, a bit unfortunate. At least Chenna's kills, a bit of a revenge kill that we see executed 
from uh, WTN Orange. Level 13 talents are finally ready for them as well, but the party here continues, and Mayev makes it out of the fight. Seems like the rest of the team isn't so lucky. The jaws are connecting, Lion Lad is down, and so is Rega. So we have another two heroes dead on the blue team side. And with that, another move over to Ravata. Nagrom still in the thick of things, and they kill Raxa again. Rexa gets wrecked, and now it's time for another four to fall. So they're immediately moving towards the top, trying to take this one out. Obviously, we've got the healing static for Nagrob now after he initially took the uh, the thunder clap. So he gets the double clap now in the team fights and has a lot more sustain through healing static. Damage output 15,000 for Rexa. He was able to pat his stats a little bit throughout the game against Chen at the top lane in the one on one they played. Kalthos has actually not died. When I see that, then I'm immediately thinking, hmm, Convection might have been a good idea. Nah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Convection is never a good idea in competitive play. Would have been cool to see, though. Would have been funny. Would have been one for the memes. But yeah, he hasn't died yet. On the team to the right, we have Ophia with the top damage. She's sitting at 35,000. AKA, she's more than doubling the top damage dealer on the side of WTN Orange. So, yeah. That is quite the statement there. Sylvana's also uh, sitting at 20,000 right now. So that's another one. We currently have 27 stacks on Kelthas. Another objective is taken, and with both of the forts destroyed, it means that the keeps are now getting attacked. And uh, the problem is that we are also having a push through the top with the Sentinel. There's a fight breaking out there that slows some of the rotations down too. So that Sentinel is going to get damage done. And of course, the Frenchies, they're now really trying to drive the momentum train. The pain train is coming! Choo -choo! And taking down 2-3, this might just be the beginning of the end. They keep about to fall, Rega on the run. Master Thief is trying to escape. He is actually going to get away here. The problem that they have is that the core cannot run. Personally, I'm still a big fan of the idea that we're getting a map at some point where the core can actually run away. That would make for a very, very fun game. Uh, hide the core. But either way, the ga first game, 12 kills, 2-4. Seems like La Crossade has it in the back here. They take the victory, the first one in this best of five. G G. Before we head into game number two, make sure that you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it yet so you don't miss out on any future content here on Calder TV. Game number two, we are on the second map, a battlefield of eternity. La Crossade has taken the lead, the Frenchies are slowly pulling ahead here. And, well, right now, we got with map number two a chance for the blue team to tie the series up. Now, important to note, they went for first pick, so they decided that they want to pick the, uh, uh the, well, <laughs> they want to pick first, duh. Uh, which means that the map has been chosen by the red team. And all of the heroes that were played on the first map, obviously, are now not available anymore. So not only do you have the 10 perma bands for the group stage, but you also have the 10 heroes unavailable that have been played in the first game of the series. So they have to already think outside the box a little bit. Again, for the second map, you still have a couple of options. It's not that you're running out of heroes anytime soon, but you already have to make a couple of adjustments here. And we've seen that teams are oftentimes already in game one or two thinking about the next map and, for example, try to set up a Chogal or something else by getting rid of a Tychus, playing a Leoric early, anything that can go for max HP and uh, such things. So there's always a couple of options of what you can do if you are really looking at this long term. Since these are best of fives, there's definitely a little bit of wriggle room that you have. But uh, right now it's again the typical ban against Samoro that they have over here. But also a bit of a swap in heroes, so uh, each team has a couple of sub players as well. Mixin is now playing uh, uh, Twitch regular, to say the least. So yeah, we got some uh, some Team Caldor presentation representation over there. And there's our Tychus. Yeah. Tychus on Battlefield of Eternity. 
that is something that you don't see all that often on the higher level. So more of a comfort pick, I'd say. But then again, obviously, the damage pool is currently being limited a bit. But personally, I would have expected to see Jimmy before I see Tigers. I mean, he's not that common anymore on Battlefield of Eternity, but you can still do a whole lot with his level 1 and really try and burn the Immortal down quickly. So something that could happen. Tyriel and Li Ming. <laughs> I still want the team to go for proper backdoor strategy at some point uh, in the group stage at least. So when I see an early Tyriel pick, I immediately think, hey, what about uh, Morales over here? But if that is your goal, then Li Ming isn't really quite the damage dealer that you want to go for. So yeah, there's that. You want to have that Grey main that has already been banned. You want to have Jimmy. Anyone that can really do damage or a lot of damage on structures. But okay, we're getting Varian and we have Malfurion. So a taunt into a root is happening. And that honestly sets Tigers up for some really solid damage with his minigun. So if they coordinate that properly, that would really help. Atenis gets banned. Yeah, we had it multiple times now. Atenis was actually played multiple times on the first day of Group A. I think twice. I can't even remember what happened in the second game. If he lost the second game or if he won it, I think it was always the top team, the Circus Clowns, that played him. So he must be sitting at a pretty decent win rate right now. But as I pointed out earlier, there's always a couple of gaps in skill also when we're talking about the group stage here, of course. Now, Suljin gets banned too. It's actually a little bit of a sad panda move. I would have loved to see him here. We had some Suljins already. There's actually plenty of heroes that we already had. We had a Murky, we had a Gaslow, we had Shogal, we had every single support played at least once. In addition to that, we saw uh, the Butcher, Illidan. Are there any heroes that we haven't seen yet? I think we haven't seen... Z no, Zagaros played too. Zagaros played, Alarak, yeah, I had him too. <laughs> I mean, in a group stage with 16 teams, you know, there are so many games, obviously you expect that there's a lot that gets played. It's more so a question of what are we going to see in the playoffs and which heroes are not going to be played in the, in the playoffs. But in the group stage, at least, I would expect to see everything once or twice. Samuro hasn't been picked, to my knowledge. He has been banned multiple times, but we haven't my seen him picked. Oh, and Deathwing is also making his first appearance here, so he wasn't picked yet either. Okay, Sonia and Deathwing are in the house. Last pick now for Nagrom. Now, he played the main tank previously. That could mean that they are playing this one with three frontliners, or that they're swapping Tyrael over to him later, or that he just goes for a roll swap. I mean, either way, Let's see what they are, what they're going for here. Illidan! I like it! I like the Illidongas! So many Illidans right now, I absolutely love it. And together with Tyrell, obviously, also a good choice. Game number two, everybody, Battlefield of Eternity. The franchise are in the lead right now. Let's see if they can put a second point onto the board, or if it's going to be WTN Orange that wins here on BOE. Game number two, the lead is there for the red team. Now, the Nando boys, they have the chance to put one on the board with Bazakate on Sonia, Pachanox on Deathwing. We got Lion Lad on Varian, and Master Thief is playing Tychus and Mixin on Malfurion. To the right side of the map, the Frenchies with Guilty Spark on Uther. We got Nagrom on Illidan. Vili on Alarak play is playing Tyriel and the Panda Colada on Li Ming. <laughs> Every single time I see Panda Colada, it makes me happy. I've never met the man, but how can you not be happy when you have a game where you have a Panda Colada in there? One of the best puns for sure. I mean, we had some fantastic player names in the past. But this one is also special. And the fact that he writes the money pictures makes it so much better. So, yeah, definitely a big thumbs up from my end. Level 1, we're already getting the battle result over here. Also noteworthy that Alarak is starting to stack right from uh, the first uh, talent. Extended Lightning is uh, taken. Up at the top lane, we have our 1v1 between Sonya and Illidan. And down here, oh, yeah, nearly the first kill. But Lion Lad makes it out. So he gets out for now, taps the fountain, and then can recommit to the battle. For Deathwing, we got the Molten Blood in. 
And the blue team is trying to deal with the pressure that's being put up by La Crusade, especially Panda Colada is really aiming at that wall, opening up the side wall a little bit. So if at any point a hero tries to escape to move to the fountain, they still have an uh, angle of attack here. And of course, vision, even more important. And they are really starting to take these towers down, aren't they? Play is covering a little bit for Liming. The grenades are now ticking in as Tychus is trying to do something about it. And Lion Lad, he's in a really awkward spot because he can either take the damage from Liming over here and then has to retreat, or he can just simply allow those shots to go through, and that results in the tower taken down. Nicely done by La Crosset. So they did really, really well here. Yeah, that is actually pretty sweet from their point of view. Sidewall gone, one tower down, they break the gate open as well, that would be even better than they could follow anybody that is trying to make their way through that. But that's a pretty solid start for them. Now we're going to keep our eye on heroes like Alarak and the sadism stacks that he has, also the level 4 is likely going to be even more stacks, so that's something to keep an eye on. <laughs> Guilty Spark here, yeah, he gets hit pretty hard. Was hit by the root first, and then Deathwing came in too. So they are trying to do some work with this. And that is quest completed! Not bad! Yeah, we are 2 minutes and 20 seconds in, and he already completed his level 1 quest. A nice job by Alarak. They lined up for him, and he just went for it. Now with level 4 though, we at least get the taunt for Varian. And given, I mean honestly I didn't really pick up on this, but they picked Sonya and the last time that they played Sonya, I believe they went for Leap. So they could really try to go for an absolutely insane blow up team here with taunt in about well, taunt into a root by Malfurion, into Leap, Tychus with the damage, and even Deathwing. So it's all gonna center around that. And I would be surprised if they didn't go for Leap, considering that they have Deathwing at the front as well. So there's that. Nagrom, on the other hand, he needs to be a bit careful. Currently topside, it seems like it's really Sonya who's winning the 1v1. I mean, Sonya against Illidan, she is going to take this. But now with the additional assist from Uther, things are changing very quickly. And Buzzer Kate still turning around as Uther retreats, but he will need some assist here. Alarak, on the other hand, he died, so Varian with the taunt was able to get close enough to him to really threaten his life, and then the rest of the team chipped in too. Nicely done. La Crusade lost the hero early on, so first blood goes to their opponent. But they are still doing very, very well, to say the least, on the Immortal. That's a halftime show that they win with ease. As down here, Pachnox is starting to do his uh, thing. So, seems like play is not going to make it either. Yeah, he's going to try and jump out. And he gets away. Jumps back down, gets out. But while the blue team is fighting and getting some kills, the problem that they still have is that the Immortal is about to be lost. And now Tychus is also in trouble. A lot of players and heroes are super low on the red team side too, but they're still pushing this. And Nagrom, he falls and he doesn't get the kill on Tychus, but you look over to the Immortal and it's pretty, it's pretty clear that they are winning the first objective. Now, nice engage here by Deathwing. He still needs to get out of that situation though, but he had a chance in the back line to put additional pressure onto Uther and maybe even kill Guilty Spark if Uther did not move away. A lot more damage being done here, and thanks to the two kills, we now even have a lead in experience for WTN Orange. It's not a big one, but it's there. They have to burn that Immortal down, which shouldn't really be a big issue considering that we're early on in the game and it's only Immortal number one. But, yeah, they need in the next few fights to either win these battles a little bit sooner or have somebody on the Immortal right from the get-go if they want to keep up with the pressure that La Crusade is putting up. And the wall at least is going to fall from the looks of it. The boys in blue are going to be able to save their fort at least. Sonia is now soloing at the bottom of the map against Alarak as Illidan has joined the four-man of the red team at the top side. So that's what they're currently doing here. And, yep. Illidan is down. Illidan is dead again. Second time that he is dead. I mean, he has an excuse. He's blind. He didn't know where he was going. <laughs> so, three kills to zero. And yes, this is the kind of humor that you can expect here. This is the level that we're talking about. If Blizzard doesn't put any effort in, I'm not going to do it either. <laughs> So, the, 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 by the way, Panda Colada is getting so much damage against structures because he's always sitting at these side angles and nobody deals with him. 
Uh, if he gets a bit too close to this one, on the other hand, then it's going to be a dead uh, Li Ming just because Varian is going to take her down. So, Sonia was taken out. But they're still looking for kills over here. Uh, yep, and where's that taunt? There it is. We need a follow-up, though, and they don't get it. All right, a bit unfortunate. Top side, three kills to one. Just left them pressuring this a bit. The fourth, they should try and make... Yeah, they should try and save that one. It's not happening. They need way more heroes up here to defend against the three that are currently pushing Deathwing back if they want to hold on to that fort, and it's not going to be a thing. So, yeah, the fort is about to go down. A goodbye. And that is the first major structure that has been eliminated. Now, off to the good news for the blue team. They have level 10 now. That should result in a few heroes dying at the bottom of the map, if you ask me. Deathwing is saying hello, Illidan. It seems like he was not prepared for that, because as soon as Deathwing appears, he's gone. And now that they have level 10, maybe, you know, they can push and get another kill. Sonya, as expected, has gone into leap. So that isn't really a shock. We have nine stacks currently for, uh, for Alarak. Not a lot. Not really as much as I thought it would have at that point in time. Three stacks, by the way, for the Master Assassin on level four. Now again, quick reminder, Master Assassin is taken for the passive, not for the stacks. If you complete it, obviously, I mean, even better, duh. But you take it for the passive. You take it for the passive increase on your attack speed, which also affects Odin. Okay, there's the taunt. Where's Sonya when you need a leap? Where's our girl? We need a leap and we don't get it. Instead, Malfurion gets blown up. Sonya's a bit too late to the party. Could still engage. Oh! There we go, but our girl is a bit late if you ask me. Now she's doing good work and she's getting a kill on Uther. She's getting a second kill maybe. Nah, the sanctification shuts her down. Five man team wipe. So, yep, that's five heroes down the drain. Easily killed the entire team. And I still maintain that if Sonya would have abandoned the immortal a bit sooner and joined the battle, it just might have been able to salvage the situation. So, yeah. But again, they put up a good fight there and they got one kill. It looked for a second like Sonya might even be able to clean up, but then Tyrion had a sanctification ready and that shut her down quickly. This time, the blue team was also able to do a fair amount of damage to the opponent's immortal. Not enough to win it, obviously, but still, this is what, 40% shield, 30% shield, 35? So, it's okay. But, yeah. La Crusade, they are the favorites. They are clearly the favorites in the series. But I still gotta give some... Oh, that leap didn't go nowhere. Ooh, that leap, yeah. Uh, nah, no, no. So yeah, that didn't really work the way that they wanted. Maybe a little bit too eager in that case. That was a very optimistic jump that she had there. And now they're likely gonna lose the next fort. Keep in mind that Illidan is not here. Illidan is topside, as you can see on the minimap. And if you leave Illidan alone on structures, that's usually a very bad idea. Good kill. Alarag is down, so Sadism stacks are lost again. They got level 30. <coughs> <coughs> Corona. <coughs> really? <laughs> you serious? <laughs> Alright, let me zoom in real quickly. There's no hit points here! There's nothing! What are you doing? Blizzard is lying to us. Blizzard is lying to us. Alright. We got six kills to six, level 13. The bottom fort is still standing. So, yeah. <laughs> it's unkillable. <laughs> I, wa I wonder who's gonna take it. I think Panda Colada is at this point on the secret mission. He should just sneak around the bottom and get one volley in to take that down. But instead, he gets locked down by Malfurion. Mixon is coming in with a killer root and dropped him. Spray game also there. Not 100% on point. They're going for the fort and they're likely gonna take it. <laughs> Nakro on the other hand. <laughs> Dove a little bit too hard. Bizarre Kate, he missed the taunt. He should have danced. He should have gone for a little bit of a jig over there. Or at least, you know, go for another spray. Maybe a bit of a B step. But yeah, because I, I mean, we caught that. So either way, eight kills to six. I am I'm consistently impressed how well the Nando's boys are doing here. I, I really am. 
I still see La Crusade heavily in favor in the series. I think they're likely going to take it. They are the favorites. But the amount of effort that's being put in by Lion Lad and his team is pretty impressive. I mean, they're really forcing La Crusade to put effort into this. And obviously, this is meta madness. So there's always some niche picks that you're running around with, some stuff that you might not quite be repaired for. And it's not the traditional play. But look at how Illidan is just struggling. Deathwing dies too. Illidan has now died five times. Ah, Sony, on the other hand, also doesn't make it. Gets killed by the Immortal, actually. But still, very solid effort here by the blue team. Nine kills to nine. The lead in experience has by now gone over to La Crusade. And down to the bottom of the map. We currently have the Immortal assaulted again by Li Ming and Uther. <laughs> Uther literally dropping the hammer every 30 seconds or so. Not really the best attack speed that our man has. Seven stacks, by the way. Seven stacks for Tychus. Would be kind of funny if he completes it. <laughs> that would actually be really, really funny. But yeah, so we currently have level 16 kicking in for La Crusade. They're going to get it any moment now. Illidan is already pushing the top lane out a bit. Before that, the bot lane has been destroyed. So WTN Orange has also started to do some structural damage. The top fort is also not looking that great. Mirror Ball is in Illidan with the Blades of Azenoth. Another Immortal claimed by the French team. And Illidan gets a Divine Shield just before he's taken down. Nicely done though. They might even get that kill here. Ooh, no. Varian is dead. He dies before he can take down Illidan. And now the red team is on their way to go for the keep at the bottom of the map. Time to shine! Let's see, can they put that second point onto the board? We currently have on level 16 the armor pierced rounds. We get the giant slammer. Smashy smash smash by uh, yeah, our girl. By Sonia, as Varian is still waiting another 10 seconds to reappear on the battlefield. So they're playing this one out with only four heroes. They have to make sure that nobody dies in the meantime. Staggered deaths are a problem. Illidan is going a bit deep too though creates space for the Immortal and for the rest of the team to push the keep, but nearly died in the process. The keep is gone, but Alarak might be gone as well. Yes, he is. Alarak is down. In comes Deathwing. They're going for Illidan. He's not going to make it either. <laughs> He's not going to make it. He might get a kill. He might get a kill, but I don't think so. So Illidan is down. Li Ming is still here. The leap. And the kill. It's a triple, baby. Core has taken some damage, but is still at 96%. But now they gotta really think about what they want to do here. They have a 5 versus 2 for some time. So what can they pull off? I mean, first of all, it's a bit of a shame that nobody is topside to take the experience here. That should have happened. So I'm a little bit surprised by that. I'm also surprised by the fact that the red team thinks it's a great idea to use those two heroes to uh, distract them. Deathwing has by now moved topside, so okay. Uh, kind of forgot about him here, but yes, he gets all of the XP for the team, puts them ahead a bit further. Should probably try and push the keep, uh, sorry, the fort at the top a little bit. That might be a good, a good move. But yeah, at this point, we now have 12 kills to 10. Damage numbers: 43,000 for Deathwing. We got 51,000 for Li Ming. Illidan is sitting at 32k and Alarak at 42,000 himself. And the fight immediately breaks out topside again over the next camp. There's still one mercenary camp that pushes the bot lane as all of this is happening. Illidan gets targeted. They try for the taunt. They find Tyriel. They want to go for him. But they quite can't. And uh, no kills thus far. Nagrom gets attacked. Oh, Li Ming. Big hits. Big damage. Big kills. Big resets. Another leave from Sonya after Tychus has already fallen. Deathwing turns into Deadwing. And well, that is very likely gonna be it. Illidan is by now just cleaning it up here. 
Late game, obviously, his territory. A lot of space to work with right now. And he gets the assist from the rest of the team. With 14 kills to 12, they go for the core once again. A 2-0 lead in the best of five. Seems to be inevitable at this point in time. La Crosse taking the victory on BOE against WTN Orange as the blue team gets wiped off the map. Nicely done and a well-deserved victory here for La Crosse. GG. The French team is in the lead, 2-0 currently, so this is already match point number one. Unless the blue team starts a reverse sweep here, they would claim another best of five victory and put themselves in a very, very good spot to advance out of this group. So we got La Crosse currently with a 2-0. Infernal Shrines is our third map. And now WTN Orange is, yeah, again, picking first. The map, therefore, decided by the opponent by the French team. Zarya gets banned and now things are of course getting already interesting because we had some picks on the last map but you can definitely say yeah this isn't really the normal tournament meta but now that 30 heroes are not available anymore to the two teams they have to dig a little bit deeper. So the 20 heroes that have been played in game number one and game number two can't be picked again. And we have the 10 heroes that are banned consistently for the entire group stage. So this is definitely the... I wanna, yeah, maybe it's the first game where the teams have to really dig a little bit deeper. And I want to see what's going to happen. So there's plenty of heroes still to pick. But I think the combos are going to get a bit more spicy with this now. Murky. <laughs> when you see the murky band coming, you know something's happening. The slug is obviously up. We had it in one of the previous games. I believe the circus clowns were playing the Abatha and murky combo together with Phoenix for the extra. Brrr, and it was pretty solid. So Lucio gets locked in. He's available for the first time in uh, this particular game. So far, every time he was banned. But now it's available. So Lucio has a first pick. And what is the red team gonna choose here? We've had a Zagara on uh, Infernal Shrines, and honestly, depending on how you want to play this now, she might not be a bad idea. But the first thing that happens is Medivh, and we get Leoric. Now, I'm... I mean, I wanted to say I'm a little bit suspicious here, and I'm immediately thinking Chogal. That's mainly because with game number three, you are usually always thinking Chogal. With them picking Leoric, they're removing another... If they ban Malthael, they're going to try for a Chogal pick. 100%. Because Tigers has been played, Leo has been picked. If Malthael now gets removed in the ban, then they are trying for Chogal here. So I would be shocked if that doesn't happen. Always assuming they're getting rid of Malthael. So we'll see if they do that. But especially in game number three. From game number three onwards, you have to think about Shogal a little bit. If he hasn't been played already. I think in some of the games yesterday, we had him played even on the second map. But yeah, so let's see what they're getting rid of. And if, if Malthael gets banned, the blue team should... Okay, they're, they're banning Garrosh instead. They might still do it. But, yeah, the problem, obviously, for WTN Orange is that if they really want to go for Malthael, they have to play Dehaka, Malthael, and then also main tank, which is still possible for sure. But, yeah, with Medivh and with Leo, you could make some plays there. Okay, so, what exactly is the blue team banning? What are they getting rid of? What are they afraid of? <laughs> and they ban... Cassia. That's a little bit disappointing. I was waiting for some X-Factor ban, but no. Moment of truth. Nope, Alex Straza. Alex Straza and Mephisto. Now, the second that I see Alex Straza, I just want Nagrom to go and pick himself uh, Stitches. But nah, not like this. Stitches mid Medivh would have been awesome. And with Alex Straza, if you go for Hungry for more on level 1, you could have just stacked it up into Oblivion and go for also, of course, a kidnap combo. But yeah, Stitches gets picked away. I'm pretty sure that Nakron would have gone for it. 
Good move, though, by uh, by the blue team. I mean, that makes a whole lot of sense. It would have been a fantastic pick for La Crusade, so they take it away from them. Greymane, he's taken, and now that leaves us with Nagrom. So what are we going to get for the front line? Somebody pointed out a bit earlier that we have May not yet played in the tournament either. So that's another main tank that hasn't been played yet. So that would be an option for them here too. But of course, there's still a few others around as well that could be chosen. But all right, show me what you got. Game number three, it's match point. <laughs> Who needs a tank? Let's go, Carrigan. Main tank, Leoric, as it seems. And we get a Carrigan together with Medivh Mephisto on Extraza. Okay, let's go, everybody. Game three, it's Infernal Shrines here in Group A of Meta Madness. Yeah. <laughs> Time to see if the red team can close out the series here. Game number three, the blue team with Buzzacade on Junkrat, Pudgenox on Dehaka, Master Thief on Greymane, Mixin with Lucio, and Lion Lad with Stitches. To the right side of the map, though, we got La Crusade with Vili on Medivh. Play E on Leoric. I can't take this seriously. I mean, honestly, if you look at this for just a second and you go up against the Medivh or whatever, and the guy is called Vili. I mean, that is not a name that just demands respect, you know? So, yeah. It's it's super funny, though. <laughs> I, I, it would be just more funny if his actual name was Vili. Panna Colada with Mephisto, Guilty Spark on Alexstrasza, and Nagrom, after his huge success with Illidan, he is now going for Carrigan. Maybe it's a bit of a battle on which hero he can die more. Spray game on point, this is a little bit disappointing, I gotta say, but the rest of the team is doing their best here, as you can tell. So we have one standard hot slow go, but outside of that, it's pretty good. Lion Lad with the uh, Stitches pick, pretty sure that... Nagrom would have loved to go for Stitches, especially with Alex Straza. I mean, as you can see, she's already going into the circle of life as her level 1 talent. Imagine that with the Hanungi for more on Stitches, then also Gorge on level 10 and Medivh with portals. He can go for a full-on kidnap combo and just simply steal everybody away. So, yeah. Top side, we have Play now going up against Pachnox and the Lick is in. So, uh, our Mr. Slurpee over here is already connecting that, and Dehaka is dragging people around. Down to the bottom of the map, we get the third camp attack. So, they're actually sneaking this one in pretty easily. Nobody is scouting this out, nobody is going for that. Greymane, fantastic on camps, one of the main reasons why you're going to pick him. And with that, we are going for a bit of a battle. Carrigan going in with a combo. But not hitting it too hard and the heels are out as the blue team walks away with a second camp wtn orange ladies and gentlemen they are doing the thing <laughs> show that minion who's boss bad minion bad minion <laughs> call me animal names butterfly bad animal names bad butterfly <laughs> <laughs> oh god, some of the stupid old jokes are still the best. <laughs> Kratz mich, beiß mich, gib mir Tiernam! Schmetterling! Böse Tiernam, böser Schmetterling! Mediv <laughs> <laughs> uh, dead and losing his stacks, not like this. This is not how the game starts. I honestly, I am predicting that in the early game, at least, it's going to be a little bit rough for the red team. But I'm really afraid of what happens once they get level 10 and uh, come in heavy with those big team fights. This is going to be the big one. So yeah, either way, we now have camps about to be taken as the first shrine set is announced. And uh, this time it's down at the bottom of the map where we're going to get the first one. And it's together with the Mortar Punisher, if I'm not mistaken. So let's see. Billy <laughs> frontlining it again. Billy, no, no, Billy, no, Billy, Billy, no. Lost his stack or two or whatever he had there. But yeah, that's the second time. So he offers himself up as a sacrifice. The rest of the team is already seeing the writing on the wall and decides that's a bad idea. Seems that Leo was also very desperate to activate his trade up at the top. And uh, yeah, that was a little bit unforced. So loses the 1v1. As I said, early game, not really good for the blue for the red team. That was already predicted. Three kills to zero, a lead with a level 7 talent in... 
And yeah, this is going to be the first team, uh, first Punisher. 100%. So with that, they can now start to come through the bot lane and try and take that wall out. You have Alex Straza with a verdant flourish. Has only made an adjustment on level 4 with the exuberance. They're baiting over the wall the way that they should. Trying to defend this a little bit easier. And here we are. Tower about to be taken down. Fort might also fall if they can push this a bit more aggressively. At least level 7 talents are valid for both teams. Punisher wants to have a piece of the action as well as he jumps in deep. Nice. Oh, but the Ponda Colada. <laughs> Clutch. But he makes it out. They are defending their fort. Alex Straza going full dragon form on us with this one. And at the same time, Carrigan dead, but so is Greymane. They're hoping for a Stitch's kill, and they get it. Greymane down, and we also have Stitch's eliminated. Alexstrasza completes her quest. Four kills to two. And of course, portals galore as Vili is picking up a couple of stacks. Is currently sitting at nine stacks in total. <laughs> the T are chattering and clattering. And all the way up at the top, we are still looking at Leo soloing it up on the lane, trying to get that fort destroyed. So the red team is probably getting the farthest ahead at the top lane, where Leo is just out pushing the Harker for most of it. He lost in the 1v1 earlier and died, but generally he's just doing pretty well there. Lion Lad riding his epic and unique mount into battle over here. I appreciate that. So epic. So unique. Oh, so much. So much wow. But we got more camps to be taken. Level 10 about to kick in. And that is honestly where for me personally the game really starts because I believe that with level 10 abilities, Black Crusade is going to kick it up a notch or two. So yeah, that would be my personal prediction on all of this. But as is, we now have with level 10, the ley line, we get also Gorge. Yeah, and they're already looking for a kill on Greymane, which you couldn't quite get here. And Tomb is obviously in. <laughs> get booped, get gorged, and even with a stun, I think Medivh might not make it. Portal control is everything here. He gets out, gets the shield, gets out, drops at least. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so close. So close. 13 stacks, but this time he survives. They were really trying to drop him. He keeps killed the ley line, he put the ley line into play just to make sure that he could escape here. So a lot of ults were really fired out to kill Medivh and then to save him. He made it, but yeah, still pretty sweet. So we'll see on what exactly is going to happen in the long run over here, but you can already tell that it's now going to be a bit more difficult to take him out with Alex Straza popping her ult in that situation. Medivh himself being able to use the ley line, so there's a lot more tools for them to try and stay bit more defensive and allow him to keep his stacks until the quest is finally completed. The fall in the top lane has been destroyed, so uh, Leo has been doing a great job. I've been pointing it out a bit earlier, and uh, he did pretty well there. As in the meantime, we are still having the next objective announced and activated, so everybody is starting to get a position for Punisher number two. <laughs> Easy lick! Trying to go for the hook, but play was ready for it, saw that obviously coming from a mile away. Still gets gorged though, and I guess that's a dead Leoric. And yeah, that doesn't look good for him. <laughs> that does not look good for him at all. Portal or no portal? No, Medivh! <laughs> yeah, he's dead too. <laughs> Medivh loses his stacks again, so a quick double kill against La Crossade, just as we have the objective up. And trying to push them back with the rip tire. Alex Straza's life. Greymane, that Lucio, that um, team, hello. And the Harker dies too. Mephisto is going for an absolute ruthless onslaught against the blue team and is able to kill two. Carrigan helping out as well. What looked like a guaranteed objective win for WT and Orange turns again in favor of La Crusade as the red team is just beasting it up in that team fight. They lost two heroes, and then they still were able to turn the fight around. 16,000, 17,000 damage for Mephisto alone, popping it up to 18k. Play, yep, he gets the portal, he won stitches, and he doesn't get it, but Mephisto comes in and shows no mercy. Dies in the process, but hey, I call worth it. Now, we have also the ult from Medivh kicking in again as he was trying to see if he can maybe save Mephisto. Wasn't quite the case, but they're obviously getting value out of this one. 
In the meantime, we are having with level 13 also the unfettered assault. Lucio is dead again. And I guess Greyman is also not going to survive. Gets hit hard by the Punisher here. They're going in for another potential kill. Nagrom receives the heal from Alex Straza, but he really wanted to go for Junkrat. Oh, that one hurts though. The Punisher with the jump and the stun. The portals allow them to be even more aggressive. Vili not having the most luck in this game. I mean, I don't think he's ever going to complete that quest. So he's waiting for the cooldown to be back up. Gets a heal from Alex Straza too. Problem for her is she's running straight into the Haka, who now tries to take her down. Which doesn't quite happen, but a good hook could change that. So yeah, they're waiting for it, and Alex Straza is dropped. Now the problem as they're going for Medivh, who might die and doesn't. Ha <laughs> ha mix it. Yeah, Vili is still alive. He's moving away too. They're trying to get their kills here. Lucio gets dropped by Mephisto. At the bottom of the map, the party continues. Master Thief dies. So does Narko. It's an absolute battlefield here, seriously. I mean, blood, death, and decay everywhere. As we have the bot lane being pushed, the camp was taken in between all of this by Carrigan. Now they're trying for another kill against Leoric. They're all over the place. We're 9, 10 minutes into the game. We have already 20 kills. Level 16 is ready. They want Leo and they're gonna get Leo. So Leo is n Leo. <laughs> Don't tell me. <laughs> Leo is actually surviving this. And now they're going for the double kill. Willy might not be able to get his stacks together anytime soon, but I can tell you this much. He is putting a number on them. Swing for the fences. In comes Leoric, the mace to the face, and that's the end of Junkrat. So uh, it is a full on fiesta, and I'm here for every second of it. I love it. <laughs> 22 kills. They go into the middle for even more action. Willy wants his quest, and he is actually getting dangerously close. He's also about to take the top damage on uh, the red team, just as a side note. We have Leoric, Mephisto, and Mediv all fighting for the top numbers here. Currently, Mephisto is still a little bit ahead, but that could change. Carrigan uh, receives the heal. Lucio dies once more. That's the fourth time that he gets dropped. They're trying for the Haka, but the helping hand is helping him out. And immediately upon that, we get another portal, another connect with a stun. Nice, Chrysalis. Oh, the Haka dead after all. Greymane rushes away. The hook connects with Alex Straza. The dragon gets hooked. They try to go through the sidewall this time, but Medivh has another portal ready for them with no problems whatsoever. He's sitting at 25 stacks right now, and they're just playing the portal game over and over again. Alex Straza, on the other hand, might be in trouble now. She gets hooked again, but Medivh has endless portals at this point in time. Went for the stable portal here, so the cooldown reduction is really starting to kick in. As he, yeah, it enables him to go for one aggressive move after another. We had Leo push through the bot lane throughout all of this, so the wall has been destroyed. The shrine is activating. I mean, again, the game is all over the place. The game is all over the place. It's a massive wall from start to finish. They're trying for another kill. Leo is going for the solo YOLO as Medivh is trying to assist him a little bit. But the hook was really nice and takes him away from the portal. So this is going to be the end of play. He tried to go for a kill on Junkrat. That didn't quite work out. But of course, thanks to his train, he is going to be back soon TM. During all of this, the objective has been nearly taken by La Crusade. There are 33 stacks. They can wait for Leo a little bit. And they want another kill, and they're getting another kill. Lucio not having a good day here. Died again. The ult of Mephisto is out. Gorge used against Carrigan. The Arca nearly dead. The Arca, he's down. But maybe they can get... Nah, they can't get a kill on Carrigan. Medivh, on the other hand, he was a bit low there, but he gets the heal from Alex Straza. Had 31 stacks, so good for him. This time he didn't lose them. A little bit of a cheeky portal back. And Lion Lad... Yeah, he gets away. He gets away. That in two was a bit too late. Very optimistic as well. But of course, there's the objective to account for too, which is currently at the bottom of the map. So they're going to take the keeper for sure. And I think right now with the kill against Junkrat, it's also fairly realistic that they're not going to stop there, but also go for the game itself and take the core down. We have level 20 talents in the hand. The Punisher again jumping in, wants a piece of the action, and that's exactly what he gets. Lucio dies again. That's death number six. 20 kills to 10. 
30 kills in this game already and it doesn't stop there the haka dies gray main dies everybody is getting crushed and this is all she wrote la crusade with a 3-0 victory against wtn orange as the favorite claims the series and the win on infernal shrines congratulations and well done Thank you everybody for watching the video today. I hope that you enjoyed the show and the commentary. And keep in mind that the spoiler protection that is going to run for the rest of the video is made possible by all the support on Patreon.com. So guys, if you want to support my work, if you want to help me start new projects and keep the spoiler protection in place, please consider heading over to Patreon.com slash Kaldor. There's also a link in the YouTube description and check that out. Thanks in advance and see you guys next time with more esports coverage here on Color TV. Have a great day.